Your experience and know-how are really put to the test when a problem arises in a process. When a problem occurs, there's a lot riding on how you respond to it. If you're wrong, the process may shut itself down, the process may be damaged, and personnel may be injured. To respond correctly, you must be able to apply your knowledge of trouble. In this troubleshooting exercise, you will make decisions that will take operators through the basic steps of troubleshooting a problem. To complete the exercise, you must identify the problem and its cause, and then correct the problem. The system used in this exercise was created to train operators in process control and in different types of control loops. While the process uses real equipment to create inputs to the control system, actual products are not produced. This allows operators to practice troubleshooting a variety of problems without affecting the operation of an actual process. This system transfers a liquid feed material from tanks in a tank farm to processes that use the feed material. The system consists of a suction header with valves, centrifugal pumps, inlet and outlet block valves for the pumps, and a pump discharge header with valves. The system also has a control system that monitors the levels of liquid in the tanks. The control system can also display changes in tank levels over time. As part of normal operations, the tank farm operators have been notified to transfer feed material from a storage tank to a process feed tank. The control room operator and the outside operator have coordinated their efforts to properly line up the valves in the system, and they are ready to start the transfer of feed material. After receiving permission from the control room operator, the outside operator starts the transfer pump. While the control room operator checks the appropriate indicators, the outside operator checks the operation of the pump. When the control room operator checks the indicators, he notices that the level in the storage tank is dropping and the level in the process feed tank is rising. Everything appears to be normal. The outside operator reports that the transfer pump appears to be operating properly. The control room operator records in the log that the transfer pump has been properly started. After logging the start of the pump, the control room operator again checks the indicators. This time, he finds that the level indicator for the process feed tank is not indicating any level in the tank. At this point, the operator suspects a problem. He checks other indicators for the control system and finds that the change in the level indication happened nearly instantaneously. The control room operator calls the outside operator and tells him to continue the transfer of feed material. The control room operator explains that he is troubleshooting a problem with the level in the process feed tank. The control room operator then calls his supervisor and informs him of what is happening. The control room operator calls the outside operator and has him realign the system valves to recirculate material back to the process feed tank. When the valves are realigned, the outside operator calls the control room operator and informs him. The control room operator checks the process feed tank level again and finds that it is still at zero. The control room operator has the outside operator return the system to its previous valve alignment. The control room operator calls the outside operator and tells him about the problem. The outside operator then checks the operation of the transfer pump. After checking the pump, the outside operator reports back that all local indicators for the pump appear to be at their normal values and that the feed material is being transferred properly. At this point, the problem that has been identified is that there is no level indication for the tank that the operators are pumping to. The entire system has been checked to ensure that there has been no spill of the fluid being pumped. The next troubleshooting step is to take any necessary preventive action. As a preventive action, the operators shut down the transfer pump. They know that without proper level indication in the process feed tank, there is a possibility of a spill. At this point, the control room operator decides to use the bracketing method to narrow down the cause of the problem. He starts by bracketing the transfer system into three parts. 
the transfer pump, the piping, and the process feed tank. The control room operator has the outside operator check the piping for any problems. The outside operator checks for signs of leaks or equipment damage. He also verifies that the valves in the system are in the desired positions. The outside operator finds no problems with the piping, and he reports this to the control room. So, the operators rule out the piping as a possible cause of the problem. The outside operator checks to make sure that the valves for the transfer pump are in the correct positions. He also checks the transfer pump for any signs of a problem. The outside operator finds nothing wrong with the pump or the valves, so the operators eliminate these components as possible causes of the problem. The operators now focus their attention on the process feed tank and its indicators. The operators now focus their attention on the process feed tank and its indicators.